Okay, we're gonna make picadillo. I'm really excited for it for a couple of different reasons. For one, I have been craving like Puerto Rican and Cuban food for so long now and I don't know what has taken me forever. You guys know I'm Puerto Rican. I've been craving, the, what is with me doing this? I just, you know, okay, this is my little dance, but I've been craving this food so bad and it is so simple and easy to make. Like, I don't know why I haven't made it more. Depending on what part of the world you're from, picadillo could mean a bunch of different things to a bunch of different cultures. I'm gonna make a Puerto Rican and Cuban, they almost go hand in hand with each other. So it is just so good and the flavor is so intense. Ugh. If you've never had Spanish food, I highly recommend trying this one. And the reason I love it so much is this is actually the first meal I learned how to ever make for my husband when we first got married. I was like, I'm gonna be the best Spanish wife ever. I'm gonna cook this and that and then. I just had to learn. And this is the first thing I learned how to make and you'll stay married. And this is also one of those meals you can eat so many different ways. So you can eat it by itself. You can eat it with tortillas. You can eat it on rice. It's most traditionally eaten on rice. You can eat it in a burrito. Like you can make so many different things with it. And if you scramble some eggs, mmm, breakfast tacos with this, so good. My mouth is watering. All right, let's get into it. So I have my Dutch oven preheating over some high heat because I wanna get a nice crispness on this beef, but over to the side where you guys most definitely cannot see, I'm cooking up some white rice. You guys know, one cup of water to one cup of rice, or if you wanted to use broth in that case, bring it up to a boil, reduce it down to low, put the lid on it, cover it, let it go for 20 minutes on low, you will have the most perfect fluffy rice. Just because I like to serve it with rice, it just, it's like a match made in heaven. To our pan, we're just gonna add a little splash of some oil. Then I'm gonna add our ground beef. I just have a roll that was previously frozen and it's 80-20. You can really use any percentage you want. Of course, it depends whether you want a higher or lower fat ratio. We're not making burgers, so the fat ratio isn't very important in this. Then we're just gonna chop it up. Now, as I always say, whenever I'm using any type of ground meat, if you wanted to use ground chicken, ground turkey, or even like a plant-based meat, you absolutely could. And somebody, please let me know, why is plant-based meat so crazy expensive? I bought this pound of ground beef for like $2.50, but if you go to buy a pound of plant-based meat, it's like $6, like what the heck? Okay, so we're just gonna cook this until most of the fat is out. You wanna get some color, and if you don't get color, it's okay. And of course, more fat, depending on the percentage of beef you have, will be rendered out. Now our beef is nice and cooked. I don't wanna overcook it as much as I would love to get super, super crispy bits. It's just not gonna happen right now. But I'm gonna take our beef out and not really press too much of the fat out because I do want some a little bit later because it adds to the flavor of this dish. But I have about, I'd say a couple tablespoons. There's, you know, four tablespoons and a quarter cup. So I would say almost a quarter cup of some beef fat down in the bottom. Ugh, fat is flavor. Please do not buy like 97.3 like of ground beef. I've done it before because I wanted to be super healthy. But let me just tell you that fat keeps you satiated. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So not only are you gonna stay fuller longer, but your, fla your flavor is gonna taste better. Your food is gonna taste so much better. So now in this fat, there's still a couple little pieces of beef, but that's okay. And if your beef didn't have that much fat or if you're using chicken or a plant-based meat, just add a little bit more. Okay, I have an onion stuck on me. You can add a little bit more olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you have. It's just for stickage purposes, not really for flavor. Then I'm gonna add one large white onion that I diced up. And we're gonna cook this, as I always say, until it's nice and translucent. Remember, if you need to add oil, feel free to. I just don't want super crispy onions. As much as I love raw onions, I hate having a super like just nice and creamy dish and everything is just like cohesively together. And then you get like this texture from the onion of it not being fully cooked and it just kind of ruins everything to me. I feel like that's why I've never really liked chili dogs when they put raw onions on top, but like I could be wrong. Okay, so we're gonna cook these, like I always say, till they're translucent and then we'll come back. Okay, I can't even lie to you guys. Roman got me distracted and I most definitely left these on for way too long. Got a couple little burnt onions, but I don't care. It's still gonna taste good. I'm gonna add one large bell pepper. I had kind of like half of one and like a quarter of another, but they were big. So one bell pepper to this. And I am gonna add a little bit more oil because your girl does not have any. Now, as Roman is about to pull up his chair here and start assisting us, I'm gonna add 
10. These are pretty gigantic cloves of garlic. Puerto Rican food, Cuban food, Dominican, we all, and especially Italian too, all love our garlic. So when I say 10 cloves, I mean, okay, this one has a little bit of skin, but it's okay. 10 gigantic cloves of garlic. If you do not like as much garlic, feel free to cut it down, but this is where you are just getting flavor on flavor. Whenever I'm doing a lot of garlic, I love to just use my press. It always makes it so much easier. And trust me, I scrape out the entire inside, the outside, nothing goes to waste here. Once we have in our garlic, then we can start. I put my flame over low because I really do not want to burn any more of those onions. Kind of disappointed that I forgot and just walked away, but I'm just glad my house did not burn down. Okay, it smells so, so, so good. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of each of the seasonings. <laughs> Rowan wants to tell you guys, a teaspoon of all the seasonings. Now I will say, I did not season my ground beef and you guys are gonna see why because I like to incorporate it. I told you guys Roman was gonna pull up this chair and start helping. I like to incorporate into my veggies first so that it really gets a chance to bloom and taste so, so good. A teaspoon of some garlic powder here, even though I already have a ton of fresh garlic. Granulated garlic really has a different flavor and also onion powder. Same thing with the onions. Onion powder and real onions do not equate to the same amount of flavor. Then for the salt of the dish, I'm gonna use adobo. Feel free if you do not have adobo to use salt, but I am gonna add a couple other things in here that are not seasoned. So seasoned to taste. You can always add adobo more in the end. It doesn't require it to be bloomed. So if you feel like you need not, if you feel like you need a bit more salt, feel free to add more adobo or even just regular salt. And then just for a tiny little bit of heat, I'm gonna do some red pepper flakes. If you wanted to cut up a jalapeno, you absolutely could. Then to all of this deliciousness, we just wanna let it once again hit. <laughs> you wanna let it hit that heat and just mix. People ask, how do you do YouTube and take care of a toddler and do all of this? This is how. We, you know, we just cut out the parts of him just like excessively just yelling and saying, you know, our names. Then we're gonna add eight ounces, which is one cup or one small can of tomato sauce. Then while Roman is rearranging the furniture in the kitchen, you're gonna let the tomato sauce kind of bloom. I always tell you guys, any tomato product that is in a can needs to have a chance to hit that heat and not taste very metallic-y. It only takes about like 30 seconds. Now at this point is when you wanna add back in your ground beef and any of the excess fat that was left in the bowl and a quarter cup of some sliced up olives. This more, this might be like a third of a cup, but it's okay. And bonus points to you if you have, <laughs> bonus points if you have the olives that have the pimentos inside of them. I don't, it just happened to be what I had and it's okay. Then the last and final step is one can of black beans. This is super, super traditional. But as always, if you do not like black beans, feel free to swap them out for pinto, kidney, whatever your favorite choice of bean is, but black is always traditional in here. And the one other thing that I love about this dish is that you really stretch your meat. So not only do you have a pound of ground beef in here, but you have one whole can of beans. So you're really like doubling up everything here. Now, I'm just gonna wait for everything to heat up. Now, another thing that people like to do is they like to add raisins into here for some sweetness. I personally don't. It wasn't the way I grew up eating picadillo, but if you want to, you absolutely could, whether they're golden raisins or black raisins, regular raisins, you can. Or if you wanna do a little bit of honey or even a little bit of sugar, you can, but I personally like a more savory picadillo rather than a sweet one. And also depending on the can of beans you use, some bean juice, bean liquid is a little bit thinner or some of them are thicker. If yours is on the thicker side, feel free to add about a quarter cup of some chicken broth or even water with a little bit of bouillon. Just really play it by eye of how you like to eat it. Mine is kind of thick, so I do feel like I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid, but I'm gonna put the, the but I'm gonna put the lid on this and let it cook for about five to six minutes just until the beans and everything can heat up and then we'll taste for seasoning and then we can serve over our beautiful white rice. Okay, um, let me just put this down so you guys can see. It is absolutely incredible. Like, look at this. I'm obsessed. 